Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. And I've been desperate to talk about this absolutely brilliant project that The Boring Company is in pole position to win in the next few months, the Ontario Airport Tunnel, which is a very, very fascinating project. And hopefully, hopefully, now that The Boring Company are in serious negotiations, with San Bernardino County Transport Authority for this scheme, I really do think that we're going to land this. And I thought, you know what, let's do a video about this and talk about why this is a superb project for the Boeing Company and how this potentially could morph into something much, much bigger and therefore net a lot of money for our good friend Steve Davis and Elon Musk. So... One thing worth noting is San Bernardino County actually went bankrupt uh, fairly recently. I think it was about six or seven years ago. And they're kind of coming out of bankruptcy and they're really looking at how they can save money and use money more efficiently. And that is where the Boeing Company comes in perfectly to take advantage and to win, hopefully, this scheme in the next few months. So, where exactly is this? I'm not entirely sure of the exact route. I'm going to guess this is fairly accurate. It's going up north here to Rancho Cucamonga. What a name that is. Rancho Cucamonga. So, the airport is down here in the south. As you can see, it's just here. And it's likely that it will go up this road here. It's around 2.8 miles. Uh, and they'll have some kind of uh, either ramp or underground station here and likely um, an underground station here at the top or potentially a ramp as well you never know so it's a good size scheme not too big not too small definitely a good profit margin in that for the Boeing company um, in terms of because we don't really know it, it, we, it's very very early days with this scheme they, they really sort of come or the Boeing companies come come to them and said look we can do this for a much better price let's sit down and negotiate and let's work something out and that's currently where we're at now the, the the entire layout of the scheme could change in the next few months the length of the project could change so what we have at the moment is it, it, basically just a good kind of ballpark idea of what's going to be done with this scheme rather than something that's going to be set in concrete so what actually is this scheme so we're going from Rancho Cucamongo to Ontario International Airport I'm unsure if this is a dual bore tunnel I'm thinking it's probably a single bore tunnel I'm thinking that it'll just operate in uh, in both directions and they'll run um, basically groups of cars at certain time periods ensuring that they can use the tunnel in both a northbound and southbound direction it's going to be 2.8 miles long, which is a good distance. Obviously, I'd like it to be a dual bore tunnel, but I, I suspect that to achieve the price that they're quoting at the moment, it will be a single bore tunnel and it will be two underground stations. So it's 14 foot in diameter and around 35 foot underground, which is about standard for the Boeing Company. Travel up to 127 miles per hour point to point, so there's no uh, stopping in between those two destinations. I'm not sure why they're quoting 127 miles per hour because I was always of the opinion it was 125, but any little bits of extra speed there is definitely very beneficial for the overall journey length. Capacity of the system. Now, there's, there's definitely been some misreporting in regards to the capacity of the system. I suspect it's more around 1,700 per hour, maybe potentially 1,900 per hour. Depends how you calculate it. And that's with regards to 10 million passengers per year. 10 million passengers is quite a lot, but I suspect the Boeing company could, with a second tunnel, triple that quite easily. Anticipated to cost between 45 to 60 million, which is a hell of a lot less than what they were proposing for the rail scheme which was basically a bloated project and it was just trying to do more than what was actually required and it was just totally not necessary. Hence why it was expected to cost 1.5 billion, which is a hell of a lot for a regional airport. Really, when you think about it, 
you don't need to be spending 1.5 billion when you're not even the main airport in LA. I expect it to be completed in about four years. I suspect that's going to come down. So what are my personal thoughts on this scheme? As you can see, very excited about this. We're starting to win more projects. We're starting to take projects that we previously proposed and get them through the planning stage and hopefully get into the contract negotiations. And that's all super promising, super optimistic for the Boeing company in the future. I think the first people that we should congratulate is Ontario Airport on saving $1.4 billion because that $1.4 billion they can utilize to pay their staff more money per hour. That's where that money should go. What is the best use for that money? And that is paying the people, your loyal employees at Ontario Airport, rather than giving some grubby rail consultant lots of money and also some contractor who's going to overprice the job in order to make a huge wad of cash. California is ideal for building these kinds of schemes. There's been quite a few proposals very similar to this that are looking like potentially they may get the go-ahead once this has been agreed contractually. So another one that, that's actually being looked at very seriously now, which is excellent, is the dugout loop. So linking the local metro stop in LA to the baseball stadium, that looks like it's going to get actually done as well. Uh, San Jose Airport is definitely definitely being looked at as well, possibly not next year, the year after. So all in all, this is very, very good news for the Boeing company. I suspect that these are the kind of sizes of schemes that we're going to be building over the next two to three years. And the Boeing company should be very proud that it can save these its various clients all this money, which they can then invest into other things like their employees. The airport will greatly benefit economically from this scheme. So this is a, a regional airport that has previously been struggling, but has really turned things around over the last decade or so. And it's really great to see that they're going to now have this local link to the local area, which is, means people can bypass all that congestion and do, for, do so for a reasonably affordable price. And they will get a very, very uh, short travel time, which helps everyone and hopefully this will lead to more schemes. So potentially in the future, um, local airlines may need to switch their business models and move away from uh, jumbo jets and maybe onto VTOL jets in the next 10 to 20 years. And hopefully this is the kind of airport here that can uh, really invest in that kind of uh, infrastructure. And then we could link it all in with more Boeing company tunnels, which equals more work for us and also equals more economic gain for the airport. It could definitely, definitely be easily expanded into Chino, Jerupa Valley, Fontana and Pomona. So you could end up with potentially up to 22 miles of tunnels going in various directions and you'll have lots and lots of passengers coming in all the time with good links to the airport. And that is really gonna benefit this region greatly allow people to work outside the area uh, and also reduce congestion on the roads outside and reduce air pollution as well. It is another phenomenal win for the Boeing company and Steve Davis to be involved in these contract negotiations. It, it is very, very likely the fact that um, we can essentially complete these schemes or the Boeing company can complete these schemes for very, very affordable prices. Therefore, it is Fairly, I'm fairly confident that we're going to come through on these negotiations and potentially win the job. And Steve Davis has done an excellent, excellent job working for the Boeing company and really putting us on the path to success. So, Twitter. A lot of people on Twitter are not happy about this Ontario airport loop. Now... I understand that some of these people work for entrenched interest groups and obviously if they're losing money then they're going to be fairly unhappy. It, we need to really focus on the context of what Elon Musk is trying to achieve here. So this is a good tweet that kind of expresses what we what 
he wants and what Steve Davis wants for the Boeing company. So the average speed of the New York subway is 17 miles per hour. The Boeing company loop can run at 155 miles per hour with 16 passengers per autopods passing every second, routing automatically between tunnels to their destination. That's 57,600 per hour per lane, and you can build dozens of lanes, will crush any subway in throughput and convenience. That's great. That's what we're trying to achieve. To get there, you take various baby steps. You start off with these smaller schemes, single tunnels, and then you expand. Unfortunately, our favorite consultant on Twitter has got very, very salty about this. Extremely salty, throwing words around. It's disappointing, really. But, you know, if you're just going to go around and attack people all the time, it's, it's, uh, it's just bad practice. What he's saying is basically a load of shite. But here we are. So every now and then you see tidbits of how useless the Boeing Company's loop proposals are. If you ignore the typo in this piece, blah, 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 12,000 per hour. What this actually tells us is the system has a throughput of 100 vehicles per hour because it's one tunnel. It's just one tunnel. The thing you've got, you've got to understand, you don't need to move 5,000 people per hour to, to Rancho Cucamonga because there's not 5,000 people per hour that are coming from Rancho Cucamonga to get on planes at the airport. It's a lot, lot less than that. It's nearer two to 3,000, if even that. So what the Boeing company is doing is offering those people that are traveling from Rancho Cucamongo an option to use their system. Other people will use the Uber. Other people may, um, may you know, get the bike or, or drive there in their own car. So it's just an option. If they want to expand it, add more tunnels, we could ha it can happily be increased to five to 6,000. But... That you can't just expect a county that has been bankrupt for a long time just to blow away a load of money on a train line that is going to be totally underutilised. It's not fair on that county to expect them to blow away $1.5 billion on something that's going to be basically underutilised by at least 50%. So what's scary is that people are falling for this rubbish hook, line and sinker. We don't have time to wait for this junk to fail. And it, it's, it's, it, the, the language is incredibly disrespectful and it is disappointing. Um, it's, it's far from junk. It's high-speed autonomous electric pods. They're going to be using 100% green electricity. They're going to be arriving frequently and they're going to take you there safely in a very convenient and comfortable manner. And for me, that is definitely not junk. So here's some guy that he's been talking to. He's more details from Steve Cars, including the fact that those transport studies were paused. The reason those transport studies were paused was because they were a total waste of time and especially money. It, it just doesn't make any sense to, to conduct a study to determine whether you want to spend 1.5 billion or whether you want to spend 70 million. It's, <laughs> any accountant in the world can confirm to you that let's spend the 70 million rather than spending the 1.5 billion because you know, you've got to balance the budgets. It, this is how the world works. You've got to stay in the black. You can't just blow money away. Um, just to give you a bit of context about this particular salty individual and some of the bizarre things that he says it really borders on the absolute insanity paypal has nothing to do with elon musk and starlink is a complete disaster anything good tesla and spacex achieves is despite musk rather than because of him it just i mean that really just says it all that particular paragraph um elon musk is trash and capitalism is broken beyond repair. Well, I think that really kind of summarises um, how seriously you should take that particular person's opinions. It's really quite bizarre. But anyway, the most important thing is that the Boeing Company is doing well in Las Vegas. The scheme at Washington DC to Baltimore is doing well in terms of the planning work that's going into that. 
We've potentially got another project in LA and we've got this project. There's lots of very, very good things happening with the Boring Company. So the most important thing that I need to do and also everyone that's watching the channel, ignore the noise, let the other people talk themselves senseless. And at some point in the next one to two years, they'll realize that the Boring Company is not going away, that the Boring Company is being successful, the Boring Company is making money and the Boring Company is going to keep on expanding. And at that point, they'll either go quiet or they'll start supporting us. That's, that's the only inevitable thing that's going to happen. And I suspect it's going to be the former. But anyway, the Boring Company is winning. They are doing exceptionally well. I'm very confident that this project is going to be landed. Very confident. And I know a lot of people in the local area who have contacted me and said, look, we need this scheme and we're really glad that it's going to come in at an affordable price and we're not going to get ripped off and our taxpayers' money is going to go into this scheme rather than being wasted on some silly train line that's going to take nearly 10 years to complete. That's going to be hundreds of millions of dollars over budget and that is going to be basically under capacity for 95% of the day. So there you go. Great stuff for the Boeing Company. We should be very, very proud that they have won the scheme. That's all, guys. Thank you very much for watching the video. Thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon. If you have some opinions on this video and all the things that have been said, please put them in the comments below. Please consider joining me on Twitter and Instagram. And, of course, come join our Discord server if you'd like a good old chat about the uh, pros and cons of this scheme. And there are both. I am more than happy to talk about the negatives as well as the positives with this particular scheme. However, I believe by investing just a little bit more money, the Boeing Company could seriously up the capacity beyond 3,500 per hour and also ensure that people can be picked up every 30 seconds so you've got a regular service rather than having a service every five minutes and that there's definitely improvements that could be made hopefully during these negotiations they uh they opt for a dual bore tunnel because then that would make things a lot easier and having uh, ramps instead of underground stations would certainly save a bit more on the costs so if you wanted to discuss those things come and join us on discord Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And remember, guys, don't be boring. See you on the next one. Take care and wash your hands.